yeah. <clears throat> what that is, that is a rusted out freeze plug. And I just put fresh coolant in it today and it just started leaking out of that. And so I put a bucket in there and I came out hours later and it's still drip, 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 drip. So I just pushed my finger in there and that metal just crumbled. So the freeze plug right there needs to be pulled and replaced. And unfortunately, I just installed the new starter there today. We got it all in there. We got everything how I liked it. Starter had some issues. Took the starter out. Fixed the starter, even though it was a brand new starter. Fixed their brand new starter. I put it back in. Yes, I just heard the draining stop. And start back up again? What? What in the world is going on? Okay. I can help the draining a little bit. Anyways. I, uh, it's just an inconvenient spot for a drain, for a freeze plug to be leaking. But people said if you're going to do one of them, do all of them. So I'm going to order a freeze plug kit while we're, sh I mean, this thing's stripped down. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to do freeze plugs on this thing. There's one, two, three, four on this side, and I don't think there's any. Yeah, there's none on this side. So there's only four, and they're on this side, and I can see all of them pretty well. This is already loose. The starter is already gone. And all four freeze plugs should be right there and easy to get to. Like, I don't know. I said I'm going to do a ground-up restoration. Let's do it right, right? So let's pull these uh, freeze plugs out, or at least that leaky one, and see what they look like. Because I've never messed with freeze plugs before. Look at this, by the way. My nice fleece, nice shirt, because I showered. All this, and my PJ pants, and my comfy shoes. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Hang on, hang on. Close it off, close it off, close it off, close it off. Yes. <sighs> wow. It started gushing. What are you doing, girl? Why are you glugging? Give me a give me a moment. I'm having some issues. So I did a little Googling um, about getting these free splugs out, and obviously I got this one out. You can tell how thin it was. I mean, I literally just punctured it with my tools that I used to extract it from the block and it popped right out. But I just wanted to show you all this. So like about an inch in there is this. And that's what my Googling did for me too. It told me, hey, when you remove freeze plugs, prepare to clean out your block with a water hose. So I'm going to remove all these tonight and then I'm going to leave this thing sitting overnight. Tomorrow we're gonna just flush the heck out of this block. It should cool so much better after this. Like, I don't even know what this is. It's not rust. I thought it'd be like built up rusty sand, but it's like not metal. It's like dirt. I don't know. Anyways, pop these freeze plugs out and see you manana. Well, I need to go get water jackets today. I got all of them out last night. I don't know if I videoed that or not. It was a pain in the butt. Um, but it also, thanks bus, well-timed. It also wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be to get those freeze plugs out. So anyways, it's super nasty outside today. It's raining, um, but I need to power wash this thing. It is time, so I'm literally gonna roll it out in the rain. Um, I'm not worried about the steering gearbox hole in the transmission, uh, because it has a drain in the bottom. So if water gets in there, that's fine. If water gets in the water jackets, that's fine. Um, the intake, I'm going to clean all that later. I don't know. It's fine. Yep. So I'm going to power wash it, go get freeze plugs, reassemble it. Put the freeze plugs in, fill it up with coolant, put the starter back in, oil filter, housing back in. And honestly, like after that, like start reassembling and then all we gotta do is clean the carbon. Man, I made that sound really easy. All we gotta do is clean the carbon and uh, we're done. 
<sighs> we barely got started. Crazy. <laughs> All right, boys and girls. So, Napa Auto Parts left me a little voicemail this morning. Let me know that uh, these were ready. So I got four freeze plugs. Probably could have used quarters, but I use freeze plugs this time. They're probably better fit. And uh, anyways, uh, we're gonna get those freeze plugs in the side of the block. They recommended to use some of this, uh, what's it called, perma seal or something? Like Forma gasket, permatex, Forma gasket sealant. One fast drying, hard setting. So, I don't know. That's what they recommended using a little bit on there to seal that when you do a freeze plug. So I'm gonna do that. Get the freeze plugs in there. I have four freeze plugs to get in. And then the uh, oil filter housing can go back on. The starter can go back on. The carburetor can be rebuilt. And then we can run this sucker, I think. Sounds good to me. Let's do that thing. All right, guys, so I got three of the four freeze plugs in and then remembered that I was not videoing. So my bad, these are one and 13, one and three sixteenths. Um, freeze plugs, they are domed freeze plugs, and basically what you do is you put them on this hole, for some reason mine, for some reason my camera's not focusing, for some reason mine actually don't fit in there very well, and it took a lot of hammering to get them in there, and I'm really scared that they're not sealing well, <sighs> but I don't know yet, so I put extra seal on the outside after I hammered them in. Um, basically what you do is... If you can't tell, that's there's a pitched angle. It's not just a flat edge. And then when you hammer this in, it flexes it and um, kind of flares it out and holds it in place. So it's a pretty cool, neat little design. But I just wanted to show y'all, you get this Forma gasket, Permatex, whatever, sealant stuff. And you put it around after you clean this off. I'm not going to do this with all the coolant all over it. I'll clean it off and then I will put the form gasket all around it. I use way too much. I don't get it in the block. I just get it in this little um, stair step. And uh, then you put this thing on there and go to town with a hammer. Um, I thought that you put them in this way, like that, but you don't. You put them in with the, uh, you put them in convex, right? Yeah, because concave, it would not then flex out. So convex, then it'll flex out to flat. Anyways. Thought y'all might want to see that. Sorry I didn't get a video of these. And uh, after we get that one in, we can put coolant in it and see if it squirts out from anywhere. If it starts peeing out of the side of the block, then um, mm, we'll pull these and try again, I guess. I don't know. Wish I could just like weld them shut. We don't need freeze plugs. Just run coolant. I don't know. I was about to take off this generator. <clears throat> And I thought uh, y'all might want to see this neat trick that my dad taught me. So box end of this wrench is going over a nut that is very rusted on and I can't get enough leverage to move that sucker. So you take a box end of a bigger wrench, this is a 3 quarter and that's an 11 sixteenths. They don't even have to be that close in size, but the closer they are the less likely they are to slip apart. So you take this end and you put it over one of the teeth on the wrench and then you have leverage. Yeah, pretty neat trick. Gives you another 12 inches almost of torque. Smarter. Basically though, otherwise, I'm still working on it, still getting footage. I'm about two weeks ahead of y'all right now as far as videos go. 
Um, gonna get headlights soon, gotta fix that. I mean, there's still stuff to go. Um, I did figure out our PTO and hydraulics work. I just forgot that the PTO on these have to be on for the hydraulics to function and go up and down. I forgot that these do not have a live PTO or live hydraulic lift, um, which separates the two um, functions from one another while the thing's running. Basically, live lift allows you to operate the three-point hitch without rotating the PTO. Imagine if you had an auger on the back of that that you needed to lift up or a shredder that you needed to lift up but you didn't want to operate the blade or the bit. You just wanted to raise it so that you could travel and set it in another location. Well, it's not safe but on these old ones the way that you did it was you had to crank that thing up with it operating and spinning and then lift it and then shut it down and if your hydraulic seals are good which mine are not. Mine actually leak down overnight. If this is my tractor that I used every day, a leak down overnight is not a big problem as long as you hold pressure while we're operating. This one does that just fine. So um, just for this rebuild's sake, this restoration's sake, I think we should go ahead and order a hydraulic rebuild kit. Um, Y'all have already paid for it, by the way, so I don't need any more funds there. Y'all have well reimbursed me for the tractor fund so thank you again for doing that that's made this really easy and really fun for me to do um but anyways i'll get back i'll let y'all get back to it i'll get back to this um this video was about basically tidying up a lot of annoying things the starter was super annoying the freeze plugs are going to be annoying but we got them under control um uh, and then what was oh carburetor we'll do carburetor after this and go from there so hope y'all are liking this video and these rebuild videos and series as much as i'm enjoying them and i hope that y'all have a great evening i'll see you on the next project bye adios